Sweden has quietly sharpened a very clever idea that could change the whole fight for fighter jets in Europe and beyond. At the heart of that idea is a simple problem. The JAS-39 Gripen E and F are modern, light, smart fighters. They are cheap to buy and cheap to operate. They pack good sensors and modern avionics, and they fly well. But one thing has always linked the Grapen to American power and American politics. The Grapen uses a general electric engine. That American heart sometimes makes life complicated when Sweden wants to sell the jet to partners who do not have Washington on board. The question now is whether Europe can solve this engine problem. One name keeps coming up in discussion and commentary. Rolls-Royce. The claim is bold. Replace the American engine with a European one, and you suddenly remove a major political break. You also make the Gripen a more attractive, fully European option for buyers who want autonomy over supply and exports. Reuters recently reported that Sweden has been discussing Gripen options with Ukrainian leaders, and that the deal details are still being considered. Step back and look at why this matters to Ukraine. Kyiv needs jets and air defenses now and for the long run. Jet fighters are expensive to buy and take years to introduce properly. Training pilots, setting up logistics, and integrating weapons are long lead tasks. Sweden has offered Gripens as one option for Ukraine to consider as it rebuilds and expands its air power. That offer is not a simple donation. It involves money, contracts, training, and politics. Sweden's move to offer Gripens has already been reported as being under active discussion between Stockholm and Kyiv. The defense community sees the Gripen as a practical choice. It is affordable, serviceable, and easier to maintain than some alternatives. But the Gripen currently uses the GEF-414 engine, and any re-export, major parts supplies or upgrades that mix U.S. components could be subjected to American export rules. That reality is one reason Sweden and others have explored alternatives. The Defense Post and other outlets have noted Sweden's offer, and the larger conversation about what kind of fleet Ukraine might build for the future. Now, why Rolls-Royce? The company is one of the few Western European engine makers with experience in military fighter engines. The Eurojet Consortium and Rolls-Royce traces link back to the EJ-200 family that powers the Typhoon. Over the years, there has been talk in open sources and industry forums about upgraded or derivative engines such as the EJ-230 that could be built from that technology base. These engines are not a one-day swap. They require engineering, certification, and close integration with the airframe. But if a European engine could be adapted to work inside the Gripen E or F, it would remove a single biggest political lever that has kept some countries from buying the Gripen. Journalists and industry observers have increasingly talked about that possibility in 2025, even if the full program details are not public. The EJ-230 and Eurojet-related options have been discussed as realistic concepts. To understand how big this is, imagine the chain of decisions that follows from swapping the engine. First, procurement becomes a European-to-European -European matter. Buyers would deal with European suppliers, European warranties, and European spares chains. Second, political friction with Washington would be reduced. That matters for countries that face U.S. political pressure or that do not want a single external actor to control re-exports. Third, it changes the industrial logic. An indigenous European engine program means new jobs, new local content, and stronger supplier links inside Europe. For Sweden and for Saab, the industrial argument is that the Gripen would then look like a truly European fighter not one with an American beating heart. Opinions in defense circles increasingly mention these exact strategic advantages when discussing why Sweden or Saab might push for a European engine path. Reuters reporting in mid-2025 also shows how European nations and suppliers are jockeying to secure larger roles in fighter supply chains. Let us be clear about the technical side. The Gripen was built around the General Electric F414 in its latest E and F variants. That engine provides a specific thrust, weight, and size profile that matches the airframe. Replacing it is not like swapping a battery in a car. An alternative engine has to fit the airframe, match or improve performance, connect to the aircraft's fuel and cooling systems, and work with flight control and maintenance systems. Uh, that means a design phase, test flights, certification, and a multi-year schedule. 
Saab and any engine partner would need to adapt the air intake, engine mounts, and software. Spare parts supply chains would have to be produced and tested. In short, it is doable, but it is complex and not instant. The baseline fact that the Gripen relies on the F414 is well documented in public material. Still, the game here is not purely engineering. It is also industrial politics and geopolitics. After the Ukraine war started, Western countries have tried to ensure that Kiev has the tools it needs. But when a single component can be blocked or restricted by one country, partners look for ways to reduce that vulnerability. That is precisely why the idea of a European engine is gaining traction in boardrooms and defense ministries. Rolls-Royce and Eurojet technology offer a path. The EJ200 family is proven. The upgraded EJ230 concept is ambitious, but it would bring a European footprint to fighters that now often carry American propulsion. And this conversation is not isolated. The United Kingdom and other governments have actively been lobbying to secure industrial roles in jet programs around the world. Reuters has reported on efforts to shift engine sourcing for other fighter programs away from U.S. suppliers and toward Rolls-Royce and partners. That pattern matters because it shows a coordinated push to build alternatives to U.S.-dominated supply chains. Now think about Ukraine's decision calculus. Kiev needs jets that can operate from its bases, use local logistics, be maintainable under wartime stress, and integrate with allied weapons. They need pilots trained quickly and weapons integration that fits the systems they already have or can obtain. The Gripen offers several advantages for a country in this situation. It is a single-engine fighter which simplifies maintenance. It has modern avionics and data links. It is relatively fuel-efficient. It can carry a range of weapons, including air-to-air -air missiles and precision air-to-ground weapons. If Sweden offers the Gripen and pairs it with a European engine option, the package might be politically easier for Ukraine to accept and for other partners to support. That is the strategic attraction behind the Swedish push. Reuters reported Sweden's Prime Minister discussing Gripen options with Ukraine in early October 2025 and emphasized that financing and delivery are the difficult points. That reporting underlines the political reality Ukraine faces right now. There are hard questions and real risks. First, replacing an engine changes certification regimes. Fighter jets are certified with a specific set of engines. Any new engine requires flight clearance, structural testing, and long-term reliability data. That costs time and money. Second, buyers who expect rapid fielding might balk at a program that stretches delivery timelines. Third, the market for fighter engines is concentrated. Rolls-Royce and Eurojet have experience, but building and scaling a fighter engine supply chain to meet multiple export customers is a big investment. It requires political backing, industrial commitments, and risk sharing. Finally, even if Sweden and Saab want to pursue a European engine path, they cannot unilaterally switch all export constraints overnight. Some systems and subsystems in the Gripen are American or linked to U.S. suppliers. That complicates the claim that swapping the engine alone eliminates all U.S. influence. Many industry analysts and commentators point to those remaining dependencies as reasons to be cautious. The public reporting and forum discussions reflect both optimism and skepticism about how simple a fix this engine swap really is. Let us now explore three plausible scenarios for how this could play out and what each would mean for Ukraine. First scenario is the fast political fix. Sweden offers Gripens with the GE engines but guarantees full package support, training and financing through allied backing. In this scenario, Ukraine accepts us Gripens with the existing engine. That path is fastest but still requires US consent for certain parts and support. The advantage is speed and a known performance baseline. The downside is the political friction that will come if Washington objects to re-export or if spare supply becomes constrained during intense conflict. Second scenario is the staged European engine path. Sweden and Saab begin an official program with a European engine partner to certify and adapt an EJ200 derivative or another Rolls-Royce engineered power plant for the Gripen. This takes longer. It also demands serious investment and political coordination between European governments. The payoff is strategic autonomy. Ukraine in this scenario could acquire Gripens that are not dependent on U.S. spare parts or licensing for engines. Over time, more customers might prefer the Gripen because it reduces the dependency on a single supplier nation. This scenario is exactly what commentators mean when they say a Rolls-Royce option could save the Gripen's export potential. 
It turns the plane into a European export product rather than an American linked product. Industry chatter about EJ230 and similar concepts sits in this bucket. But remember that converting this concept into operational jets takes years and substantial capital. Third scenario is the hybrid and modular approach. Saab could offer customers a grip and baseline that is engine agnostic on paper. That means designing modular mounts and interfaces that can accept either the F414 or a European engine in the future. In such a design, investors minimize risk and allow a stepwise transition. Buyers like Ukraine could receive early deliveries with one set of engines, and later transition to another when it becomes available. This hybrid path is attractive because it buys time. It also keeps options open for countries that have mixed procurement policy. We should also talk about the industrial politics around Rolls-Royce itself. The company has been actively seeking bigger roles in new engine programs. In 2025, Rolls-Royce publicly discussed ambitious plans for new engine technology and strategic partnerships with other states and companies. At the same time, the UK government has shown an appetite for leveraging Rolls-Royce in wider defense and aerospace initiatives. Reuters and the Financial Times have covered these interests and the push to re-establish stronger European engine capabilities. For Sweden and Saab, success means new export deals, stronger industrial partnerships in Europe, and the ability to market the Gripen as a sovereign choice. For Rolls-Royce or any European engine supplier, success means new markets and new long-term production lines. These are all achievable, but they rely on serious political and financial commitment. There are second-order strategic effects to consider. If the Gripen succeeds with a European engine, buyers that previously hesitated because of U.S. export rules might re-enter the market. That would create competition for more expensive stealth fighters. It could also push other jet makers to consider more flexible supply chains. On the other hand, Washington might respond by tightening controls in other areas or offering incentives to keep customers tied to American engines. The end result is a shifting market where politics and industry collide. A realistic timeline is useful to imagine. If Sweden and a European engine maker decide today to start a formal program, early concept and design work could take a year. Building prototypes and performing initial ground tests could take another year or two. Flight testing and certification would likely take two to three more years, assuming no major surprises. That means we are looking at a multi-year effort. Shortcuts are possible if an existing engine variant, like an uprated EJ200 derivative, is chosen, and if political will accelerates funding and priority. Still, the minimum calendar is likely measured in years, not months. That is why the hybrid path or continued purchases of Grapens with existing engines remain important near-term options for Ukraine. So, what should Ukraine do? Pragmatism matters. Kiev needs capability on the ground and in the air now. If the Gripen with its current engine can be fielded quickly with international support, it deserves serious consideration. If a European engine becomes available later, a stage transition could follow. The ideal approach for Ukraine is to secure a promised path to scale and sustainment. Numbers of jets, flight hours of training, ammunition and integration of weapons, and a clear spare parts plan. Finally, consider the symbolic value. A Gripen with a European engine would be more than an aircraft. It would be a statement about strategic independence. It would say that Europe can build, supply, and support advanced fighters without over-reliance on a single external supplier. It would reshape procurement politics in Europe, creating new opportunities for collaboration. At the same time, it would underline the reality that defense choices are never just about hardware. They are about alliances, money, industry, and long-term strategy. Rolls-Royce's potential role is only one piece of that puzzle, but the idea that a European engine could make the Gripen a genuinely European offering is powerful. It explains why the story has traction now and why so many voices in defense circles are watching closely. So, where do we land? Sweden's push to make the Gripen more European through a Rolls-Royce or Eurojet-linked engine is an idea with real strategic sense. It addresses a core export problem and opens possibilities for countries seeking independence from single suppliers. But it is not a silver bullet. The engineering, certification, and financing hurdles are real. In the short term, Ukraine and others will weigh speed against sovereignty. In the medium term, a successful engine swap or a modular engine approach could change export dynamics and give the Gripen a new lease on life in global markets.